Hey, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Princess Auto See at Work. My name is Dan Verville. We're excited to have you here today. Uh, if you haven't seen the show before, uh, See at Work is a show that we put on every month to show you, our Princess Auto fans and customers, some Princess Auto products live in action. So today's show is actually going to be just a little, little bit different uh, than the stuff we would normally do. This is our special holiday edition. I'm here live at our at our home office in the studio, or as I call it, Dan's office. I've taken it over. Uh, and as always, right beside me, well, digitally right beside me here for today's episode is none other than Mr. Derek Chalmers. Derek, how are you? Not bad, Dan. Thanks for having us. Hey, yeah, all, as always. Where, where are you at right now, Derek? I'm at the store on Panet Road in Winnipeg. Awesome. How are things going there? Very busy. Christmas well, I'm glad, is coming. I'm glad that you found the time to sneak away into the back room to join us today. So oh, but myself and Derek um, are here, as always. But today we have a very, very special guest. That we're very What's excited. Up, guys? Mike Tierney here with Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. Today we're talking about winch safety, trash pumps, axles, log splitters, trailer accessories, RV water systems, air tools, safety and maintenance on chainsaws, log splitter accessories, and log accessories. It's all about tires, black water systems today. Folks, that is none other then the host of Tech Tips with Mike T, Mr. Mike Tierney, our product knowledge specialist here at home office. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing good. What's up, guys? Glad to be here. Looking forward to this next little episode here. Yeah, thanks for joining us today from uh, from your cave down there. We'll get into some of your background decor maybe a bit later if we have time. So on today's show, uh, the theme once again is our holiday special. So we got Derek, we got Mike, and they're going to go through their top five must-have holiday items that the Princess Auto fan in your household needs. And by the judging by the feel of of you know our customer, I know you're watching right now, and I know you're saying, "Oh my gosh, I haven't started my Christmas shopping yet." So this is a perfect show for you. Um, as always, we are going to be taking your questions. Send them in uh, through the chat. They'll come to me. I'll ask the questions to Derek and Mike. They'll give you answers. And the more questions you ask, uh, the more chance you have of winning because we do have a prize. We have two prizes today and they're great ones. We are giving away two $250 gift cards for Princess Auto. So you can use them to buy one of the products Matt, Mike or Derek are talking about today or anything you want. So that's exciting. So keep asking questions. Uh, as you have them, I'm going to keep moving this cord behind me because it's really awkward. But let's uh, let's dive into it. Top five items. Let's go with our special guest, Mike. You're you're off off and running first. What do you got for us? All right. So my first top five item is a powder coating oven. So um, you know if you're into doing a little bit of touch up work or doing some car part uh, painting and you don't want to do the traditional. Uh, you know, wet spray painting, you can go to the powder coating. So that means putting that powder on dry and then you're going to need to bake it. So we carry a nice little powder coating oven. It's super portable. It's 120 volt. It's got a temperature adjustment of 50 to 250 degrees Celsius. So that'll, uh, you know, warm up your powders. It also has a timer so you can set it with a lamp inside to create that heat. And it's a great little uh, tool to have in the shop. Uh, you know, fairly inexpensive, and uh, it gives you other options other than doing the regular spray bomb. Nice, and that is probably a better option than using your home oven. Definitely not going to want you to use your wife's toaster oven, for sure. Okay, well, that's a good product. So that's number five for Mike. Derek, what is your number five item this year? So my number five is the uh, digital soldering station. Um, this guy is super handy if you're into building hobby projects, doing electronics repair, um, even automotive. You could take it. It's portable, 120 volts, plugs into any outlet. Uh, take it to the garage, to the basement, wherever you want to do your repair. Um, you can set it uh, temperature high, low. Um, maximum temperature on this guy is about, uh, I think, 400 degrees. Uh, Celsius. Uh, it's got a conical tip, which is really nice for some fine, you know, soldering on a board or doing some wire connections. Um, little cleaning station on the bottom there. It's a nice piece for anybody who wants to uh, play with a little bit of electronics over the new year. Are you seeing, are you seeing a lot of folks kind of getting into to soldering and kind of the, the I mean, 
I mean, I know a lot of people are, but is it kind of moving more towards that as people like to do? I mean, we've got more time on our hands now, right? Absolutely. We've seen in the last little bit, a lot of people kind of taking up new hobbies or getting to something that they've had sitting around and needs repair. Um, it's, it's always a popular aisle. There's always people coming into the store saying, where's your soldering stuff? Where's your soldering stuff? And uh, this station is, it's a nice option from just the standard little iron that most people are going to have uh, because you can set it for different applications. You can do some heavy soldering, some light touch-ups. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, been a pretty popular item this year. Awesome. Well, uh, before we venture off from your number five pick, uh, Mike, we have a question come in about uh, your powder oven. Uh, Leanne in Edmonton wants to know, does the powder oven have a safety shut off? Um, it will have a timer shut off. Um, uh, definitely, if you set it to the, the full 60 minutes, then it will uh, actually shut off. Um, you do have to monitor it, obviously, anything that heats up. Um, um, it's, you know, obviously there's no carbon monoxide or anything like that, but you do have to keep an eye on it, um, you know, as a manual process. That's why it's got that timer. Okay. Another question came in for you, Dean from the Okanagan. What is needed for powder coating at home? Um, so actually it's a fairly basic setup. Obviously you need a decent space, some ventilation. Um, the oven will help you bake your, your product, but you also need a powder coating, um, unit. So we carry a couple of different ones. Um, basically, it looks like a little mini charger. It sends an electrical current through the component that you're trying to paint. And then it sends a, a static charge through the, the tip of the, the powder coating gun. And uh, as that paint, the dry powder comes over top of your, your project, um, it basically creates an electrical charge, static charge, kind of basically magnet, magnetic field forms and it bonds to that surface. Um, if you're doing heavy cleaning, you may want to get a, a small um, abrasive blaster. Um, you can use garnet. Garnet's a really good media to clean. Uh, you got to make sure that there's no fingerprints or any kind of oils. Otherwise, the powder coat won't bond. And then obviously, maybe a compressor. But uh, yeah, there's, there's not a lot that you need. You don't need super big equipment. And uh, for the hobbyists, it's a great, um, you know, starter program. So Dean, hope that answers your question. Head down to, to Princess Auto and then pick that stuff up and get going. Um, Brad in Elgin wants to know, can it double as a welding rod dryer? Uh, no. Um, that, that's been asked before. Um, you... The problem is, uh, you know, your temperature ranges, you got to really be within. Um, I wouldn't suggest using that as a dryer. Um, you know, they do have those specific ones. And of course, they're going to be a little bit more money. Definitely. Um, I would shy away from the electro dryers, the, the welding rod dryers. Okay. Don't do it, Brad. Don't use it for that. <laughs> just a heads up from Mike. All right. Well, if you're just tuning in, you are watching See at Work, the holiday edition. I'm Dan. I'm joined today, as always, by Mr. Derek Chalmers and our special guest from Tech Tips with Mike T., Mr. Mike Tierney. Uh, if you haven't checked out Tech Tips, you should. Uh, it's a great show where Mike will break down a, a product line that we carry at Princess Auto and walk you through the puts and takes of each thing. So if you haven't checked it out, go watch it after you watch this. And of course, after you watch every episode of See at Work, uh, because it's the best show. Um not that it's Mike or tech tips. So let's go on to product number four. We got it. Let's keep the show rolling. So Mike, what is your number four product for the season? So I'm going with a 145 amp multi-process uh, pro point welder. Um, I have one of these in the shop and it has not let me down yet. It is an amazing little unit. Um, it's both low voltage and high voltage. So you can run it at 115, or if you've got 230 in your shop, you can use the adapter and it'll give you um, that option. Uh, you can have it automatic set or manual set. Uh, really easy to use dials on it, even with gloves, they're rubberized. So you can control all of your inputs. Um, super simple with even heavy, you know, welding gloves. Um, what this process does is it gives you the options between an arc welder a MIG welder, both flux core and gasless, so or gas power, you know, as the MIG. And then you can upgrade um, through another kit that you would have to buy uh, separately to the TIG. So, um, you know, all you, we get a lot of questions about TIG. Oh, I want to get on that. Well, those machines are really expensive as you, you know, get into, you know, the high end models. This is a great entry level, even more professional level. Um, it makes excellent welds. 
Um, you can, you know, weld, I've welded trailers and, and all kinds of things with this. And it just gives you that three type of welding option. And, um, you know, you don't have to have three separate welders to do, you know, those kinds of jobs. So it's a great uh, little welder to have in the shop. Nice. Yeah. For someone who doesn't have a welder, that is a great starting point, like you said. Absolutely. And as you're learning, if you're only starting out with arc and, you know, with the rod welding, and then, you know, you, everybody wants to get into that MIG because it's just pull a trigger and go. Those kits come with that. And like I said, you just have to buy the TIG torch separately and then change out your gases and away you go. So you can progress through your welding experience and uh, knowledge uh, just by trying out throughout all of the different processes. Nice. All right. Well, Derek, there's the welder checked off the list. What do you got for number four? Okay. My number four is going to be the uh, ProPoint Plasma 30 Plasma Cutter. This is a really nice unit. Um, it too is uh, dual voltage, so you can run either high or low voltage. Um, you can do a, a clean cut up to a quarter of an inch steel, and you can do a sever or a rough cut up to half an inch. Um, it's a, uh, low air supply required. So if somebody had a 20 or 30 gallon compressor, they could easily use this machine. And, uh, somebody's doing some automotive repair, uh, floorboards or rocker panels, things like that. Uh, making up some, uh, cutting some rough stock for motor mounts or a uh, street rod project they're working on. This machine will do everything they ask. Um, the nice thing about it is it is very light, very portable, and very affordable. It's uh, one of the uh, least expensive machines we have, and it's a uh, butter smooth cut. Nice. Do you, do you find a lot of a lot of folks have plasma cutter, or is that what plasma cutters? Or is that one thing that you don't really have in your garage? Well, we're seeing a lot more people come in now that we've got these guys as options. Like I say, they're not uh, they're kind of a, an entry level price, um, but the quality is is. I'd say far above entry level from what I've seen. Um, the ProPoint line is, uh, as with the welders, as Mike was saying, it's a, a really nice option for somebody who wants to spend a little bit more money and get a tool that they can work with for a long period of time. Um, the uh, the cut quality out of these guys, the ProCut 45s that we have as well, which is the next step up, um, they're second to none in that price point. Um, and a lot of people are using them for just some projects they're doing. Uh, some people are doing some art projects. Uh, you know, they're getting into some uh, kind of uh, little businesses, things like that. Um, yeah, they're they're a really nice option, and see a lot more people looking for them. Nice. All right, we got a question again. Uh, Dean, he he wanted to get into powder coating. Now he wants to get into welding. Mike, <laughs> he's asking if he's never welded before, would he be able to to use the unit that you showed? Absolutely. Um, this welder is so intuitive. Um, the, uh, the, the manual, which, you know, us guys don't really like to read manuals, but the manual that comes with it, um, they've done a really good job of, you know, getting it set up, um, you know, starting your initial settings and, um, you know, basic, basic learning on how to weld. Um, this unit is not, you know, overly complicated. Um, you know, you've only got a couple of settings that you have to choose from. Your amperage settings will be your heat settings. Um, and then your speed, if you're using uh, um, a wire feed system, you just have to adjust for speed. Um, there are some uh, information in the inside of the, uh, the, the unit that will have speed ratings to amperage ratings to the thickness of metals. So um, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, this, don't be afraid of this one as a, you know, an entry level welder or someone just picking up welding. Definitely the learning curve on this unit is really, really short. And uh, at no time at all, you'll be wanting to, you know, maybe next Christmas go and get the TIG, uh, TIG assembly and uh, really start uh, doing some meat welds. So I could even use this welder is what you're saying. That's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely, maybe. Dan. Yeah, yeah. Anybody I thought you were going to say absolutely not. I really was. I really thought you were going to say that. Uh, we've got another question. And once again, keep your questions coming in. Uh, at the end of the show, we are going to be giving away two $250 gift cards. Uh, in order to win, you need to ask a question. Uh, if it doesn't get mentioned on air, it doesn't mean we haven't seen it. So uh, please keep those questions coming in. And we got one from Laura. And I think I I think I understand the question, but let me, I'll state it out loud. Let me know. Uh, both, this is to both of you. What is the difference between a welder and a plasma cutter? Same volts? Does that make sense as a question? Or am I reading that incorrectly? Same voltage is maybe that what she's trying to ask? 
So I'll, I'll take a stab at that one. So um, the input power that comes into whether it's the, the, the welder or the, the plasma cutter um, will have options. So, you know, on a low voltage side, which would be your regular plug in to the wall or a, a larger plug on the 230 side. Um, so they, they have those options. Now their output changes. Um, a welder actually molecularly changes structure to bond together. So like materials, mm -hmm. a plasma cutter takes, as we've all learned, there's three states of matter. Well, there's actually a fourth state now, and that's that plasma. We superheat the air that comes through that plasma cutter, and it creates a plasma arc. And that arc is what creates the cutting path that, um, you know, if you want to do any of the kind of work that Derek was talking about. So you do have different settings. They're not the same settings, but when you plug them into the wall, they're very similar in that application. Hey, Laura, we hope that answers your question. Uh, Catherine has a question for you, Mr. Chalmers. Uh, what materials can you not cut with the plasma cutter? Well, it would have to be something conductive. So you could cut uh, mild steel, aluminum, uh, brass. Um, you wouldn't be able to cut wood, uh, plastic, anything like that. Anything that's not going to carry a current because it uses an electrical current. It has a ground clamp. It has an electrode in it. And it needs that current path to flow. Um, so if you have something that's really dirty or covered with paint, you'd have to clean that off to allow that current path to flow um, and allow the cut to take place. The same thing as a welder. You'd have to have a clean path in and a clean path out to allow that current to flow. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question and good to know because I'm sure that uh, someone would just try to cut wood with that. I don't know who, <laughs> maybe me. Um, okay, a couple more questions coming in. Uh, Greg wants to know, do we have beginner kits for the accessories you would need uh, for welding, like helmet, gloves, glasses, and all that? And uh, I think I can answer that one. Uh, yes, Greg, we do. We have everything you need to start welding. So head down and then pick it up and get going because you're, you're missing out on the good times. Derek taught me how to weld recently. Welded a lot of stuff, didn't I, Derek? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for saying that with a semi-straight face. That's good. Uh, before we get to your number three picks, uh, Rachel, Mike, she says, nice bucks. Did you shoot them yourself? I did. The uh, one over on my, uh, my you know, right side here, That's uh, that was my first buck when I was 15, uh, many, many, many moons ago. And uh, this one, the other side, was my first uh, buck with a, uh, a black powder uh, so yeah, pretty proud of them. They're not the largest, but hey, everybody, everything's a trophy. Nice. Okay, let's keep rolling on. Once again, if you're just tuning in, you're watching the holiday edition of See at Work. I'm Dan. I'm joined today by Derek Chalmers and Mr. Mike Tierney. We're walking through Derek and Mike's top five picks for this holiday season for that person on your list who love Princess Auto, who loves tools, who needs this under their tree this year. We're on to product number three, and I believe Mr. Tierney, uh, Mike, I think it's your turn. Right. So, um, you know, for the stocking stuffer uh, things out there, we can't fit, uh, you know, a welder in, in a stocking, but we could try, but uh, definitely sea foam. Uh, any, anybody that has a shop, anybody that has uh, any kind of equipment that they either use on a daily basis or use for a seasonal sea foam is, uh, I call it magic in a can. Um, it is, it has so many things that it does for your fuel system that this would be too long to list. Um, you know, what it'll do is for, for me, my, the benefit for me is storage. Um, if you add sea foam to your, your fuel, um, basically uh, they say that uh, two years of storage, uh, if that's been properly treated of fuel, uh, you'd wow. never be able to do that with uh, today's fuel. So, um, you know, it de-ices, so you can run it through your snowmobiles, prevent any kind of, um, you know, uh, ice buildup or freezing in your fuel lines. Um, if you're a diesel, uh, um, you know, person, basically gelling can happen when our temperatures get super low. Adding this will also help prevent any kind of gelling. Um, it cleans your, uh, you know, the internal components of your engine. It, uh, you know, takes out carbon. Um, it basically can be worked with four cylinder or four, four stroke, two stroke, um, marine, 
diesel, all those applications, there's a laundry list of things that it does for your, uh, for your system. Um, it acts like a lubrication. So um, you can't put, and you know, it's just not a magic uh, amount. You can pour, uh, you know, the whole can in if you want, but uh, you know, half a can, quarter of a can, but you do want to run that through the system before you store it. Uh, don't just pour it in the, the tank and uh, expect it to, you know, prevent uh, any other problems throughout the system. You do need to run it. That is a, an amazing product, and uh, I use it on everything. How many cans do you go through a year, Mike, of seafoam? Um, well, I used to buy the small cans that, uh, you know, were popping up, but I buy the big cans now, and I probably yeah. go through four or five minimum a year on my, my small equipment. And Nice. Yeah. Well, that was a question that actually just uh, that actually just popped in. We started talking about seafoam. Uh, people want to know, can you use it in a snowblower, lawnmower, Tractors, anything. boat generators, yeah, anything, um, anything that has basically uh, fuel. So even biofuel, if you're running biofuel or you're making biofuel, it'll even work in that. Um, diesel, marine, two-stroke mix, oil, um, you know, you know snowblowers, everything that basically has an engine, you uh, you won't go wrong getting some sea foam in there. And uh, in, in beginning of the year startups, like if you're just starting that up, add a little bit more in there and that will help clean out any kind of, you know, anything that you've had in the system. Um, again, it, uh, it works like a charm. I never have to worry about, uh, you know, equipment starting up in the, um, the season that I need it to after storage due to fuel problems. Magic in a can. That, they should put that on the side of it for <laughs> a little Mike T tagline there. Um, <laughs> Mike Darcy wants to know, this is actually a good question. Can any damage, not that other questions aren't good, just saying, but can da damage be done to an internal combustion engine if you go over the recommended dosage? No, no, absolutely not. Um, basically, like I said, uh, yeah, you, you just, you, you, if you oopsie it and uh, it is what it is, I put a whole fuel uh, or a whole tank in, uh, you know, my truck um, every two fills. Um, I put, uh, I don't typically put the seafoam directly into the, like the small powered equipment. So I typically have a, a jerry can or a gas can that I'll put in a five gallon uh, can. I put about half of a, uh, 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 one of the small, um, seafoam containers and, um, I never have a problem. Nice. All right. Seafoam. That's a stocking stuff for the year. Derek, what is your number three product on your holiday wish list well, my number three is our pro point uh half inch impact wrench it is a really really nice wrench uh somebody who's doing some seasonal tire changes somebody who's working in a trade working in a shop uh this is a good choice it's a composite body it's really nice and light uh that makes a big difference versus something that is uh something in a full cast body if you're going to be using it all day day in day out uh it takes a lot of strain off you um it can run up to a thousand foot pounds of working torque which is really nice um in such a small frame um you can run uh this guy a three-eighths line um even something as small as a 30 gallon compressor you could use this it's got three speeds forward one speed reverse as you see there and uh like i say if you're just doing some you know light maintenance or if you're doing some rebuilding repairing uh working in a shop it's a really nice option to have I see. Yeah, that that weight definitely would make a difference. I mean, what? How, how much lighter is it than than the uh, the other heart, the other heavier bodies? It would depend on the the, the manufacturer, um, but I mean, you could see probably uh, a third of the the weight overall reduction. And that, like I say, in, in a full day's use over over time, that'll really add up. Well, Brian wants to know uh, what is the maximum torque. The maximum torque would be a thousand foot pounds. So that's all going to depend on the type of compressor you've got, what kind of uh, cubic feet per minute or CFM that's required, um, or that it's supplying, I should say. Um, typically, what you're going to see is to get full torque out of something like this, I think you'd be running in the low 20 CFM range. So if you had a, a two stage 80 gallon compressor, um, you'd be looking at uh, probably getting the best bang for the buck out of it, but you could certainly use it with something smaller. Um, the, the top end of your compressor charge, when you've got, uh, you know, it runs to its completion and shuts down, that's when you're going to get your biggest bang for buck out of it because you have your highest amount of cubic feet per, per minute flow and your highest pressure coming out of that. And of course, fittings and hoses make a big difference and we've got lots of options. So you can always come down to the store and see what we've got and we can always help you out. 
Awesome. All right. Well, if you're just tuning in, you are watching See at Work, the holiday edition. Uh, See at Work is a show that we put on every month to show you some awesome Princess Auto products live in action. This month's episode is a bit different. We are running down uh, Mr. Derek Chalmers, who works in our Panit Road location here in Winnipeg, and Mike Tierney, our home office product knowledge expert, running down their top five items, must-have holiday items for that person on your list who love Princess Auto, who needs something new in their garage. Uh, and yeah, we're hoping to spark your creativity because we know you've waited to the last minute and you haven't gone out to buy anything yet. So now is the time. We're into our top two picks. And just a reminder, throw a question in the comments. Uh, if you ask a question, you have a chance to win one of two $250 gift cards that were given away today. So don't be shy. Ask away. Um, and we're down to our final two. So Mike, what is your second to last item? Well, in today's crazy days, um, why not get a metal detector for the family or get one for each family member? Um, this is a great way to get outdoors, um, you know, go for long walks, maybe find some treasures, find some lost things that uh, maybe you dropped in the field while you're out farming, fixing stuff in the fields. Um, basically, it's a nice lightweight unit. Um, it's got a, an LED backlit uh, screen, um, lots of different modes uh, you know, to select from for your different depths that you might be reaching down to, speaking of depths, believe it or not, this thing can go down to almost five feet. So uh, that's pretty deep. That's been buried for a few years, that's for sure. Um, it also can be lightly used underwater, just the head unit, the uh, the, the, the magnetic coil. Um, so if you're doing, uh, you know, walking shorelines uh, around beach areas, you know, if you're just, just inside the water's edge, uh, you can, you know, utilize this unit. So it's a great way to get out find some stuff, maybe pay for, uh, you know, a trip or something. You never know what you can find if you're not looking for it. That's true. That's true. And I, I understand you get a lot of other different things when you purchase this uh, metal detector. Yeah, it also comes with a little uh, a sand scoop, um, a little mini fold-up shovel, uh, a rain jacket. So you wouldn't want a free rain jacket with your metal detector and uh, a nice big carry bag for uh, to pack everything up. So uh, a few little extras with this unit and, uh, you know, it, uh, I have some fun with it and uh, find some lost things. Yeah, you never know. You never know what you're going to find out there these days. That sounds like a good uh, a good family activity or just an activity for a kid you want to get out of the house for a few, <laughs> few six, ten hours maybe. I don't know. All right, Derek, it's time to, to come to you. What's your second to last product? What's your number two? Oh, I think we still have, have Derek. The... There he is. Yeah, I'm still here. Yes. So my number two. My number two pick this year is going to be uh, another pro point item. Um, it's a 13 piece ratcheting metric wrench set. Um, this kit has every size in between eight millimeter and 19 millimeter. And it also comes with some adapters. So it will turn the wrench into basically a socket wrench because one end of the wrench is an open end, as you can see, and the other end on all of them is going to be ratcheting and it's reversible ratcheting. You would turn the wrench in one direction and you'd flip it over to go either tighten or loosen in the other direction. And you can use the adapters to run sockets. So if you are uh, trying to access something, you need a deep socket to get into that a flat standard wrench won't work. You put the adapter in, click your socket on, and you have basically got a socket wrench and away you go. And those would come in the quarter inch, three eighths and half inch sizes. And there's also a quarter inch uh, hex drive bit adapter for the six sided quarter inch bits, drill bits and whatnot that you typically could get uh, with some of the screwdriver kits that you might have. Nice. That's a lot of different uh, variety just from one set of wrenches. Yeah, no, it's a really nice kit there. Uh, I use them at home. Uh, they're nice case that comes with, so they keep them all contained, keep them nice and safe. And uh, I'd really suggest that if somebody's just starting on um, getting interested in working on vehicles or working on equipment, uh, it's a nice set because this will run the gamut and most of the fasteners you're going to see nowadays are metric. Um, so it's a, a really nice option for somebody who maybe just wants to get in and, and uh, build a little tool chest. Nice. Very nice. All right. We got a couple of questions coming in. Uh, so let's go back. We'll go back to, uh, well, Derek, uh, got a, a wrench question here. Are these standard sizes? These are, this kit isn't standard specifically, but there is a standard. There's a few standard kits, actually. We'll have both metric and standard in a, a regular wrench and the ratcheting wrenches. Um, we've got uh, online. You can check the catalog, the paper catalog as well as you have it. Um, there's uh, probably about uh, 10 or 15 different types of kits, different amounts, different sizes, ranges. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a full spectrum of wrenches there. Awesome. Now, Mike, a couple of questions on the metal detector. Uh, Greg wants to know, can you use headphones with it? 
Yes, actually, that's something I should have mentioned. It also comes with headphones, so you can dial into the different tones that the ferrous metals will give off. Nice. And Laura wants to know, what's the battery life? Do, do you know what the battery life uh, is? So the batteries don't come with the unit, so uh, they have six double A's that you'll have to get. So if you're getting it as a Christmas gift, make sure you get a couple of packs of double A's along with it. Um, they say that they have about, I think it was like, 30 hours of, of use. Um, that's kind of where I read. So okay. it depends on how, you know, how deep you're reading, um, you know, temperature, you never really can trust those specific specs, but definitely you're going to get uh, a full day plus or a full weekend plus uh, searching for goodies. Yeah. We had a few folks asking if, uh, if, if they were, if it were rechargeable or not. So it's not, so you'll need to supply. So it's six double A's. Six double A's. Uh, you can always buy rechargeable double A's and keep that going. Uh, I never understood batteries until I became a parent. Man, everything needs a battery. So that's a lot of fun, a lot of investment. Um, Darren has a question. Does Princess Auto have a low torque screwdriver? We have a small screwdriver, quarter drive. Um, it is low torque. I believe it's up to around 95 inch pounds, which would be just under 10 pounds, 10 foot pounds of torque. Okay. Darren, we hope that answers your, your question. So we do have one. Um, all right. That is, that's the top four. So we, we got one more each. So if you're just tuning in right now, you're watching see it work the holiday edition, Mr. Derek Chalmers, and Mr. Mike Tierney, uh, Derek, obviously, working at the Panit store here in Winnipeg, my co-host on See at Work, and our special guest, Mike Tierney, the host of Tech Tips with Mike T, uh, are in the house today. They've run through, so far, they've run through their top four items uh, that they think everyone should have under their tree this year. And now we're going to the, the special spot, the, the number one spot. Now, these are highly, highly uh, vaunted products. People love these ones, and these are their favorites. So, Mike, what is your number one pick this year? So my number one pick for sure, without a doubt, would be the 48-inch high lift jack. So some of you may know it as a, a jackal, a widow maker, knuckle buster. They come with all kinds of names, but the high lift is the, the brand, and this is the extreme 48-inch jack. You can work with about 4,600 pounds or so, and uh, this thing is like my top item in the store. Uh, no two ways about it. It basically has cast iron components, super rugged. Um, you can use this as a, obviously a jack. Um, you can use it as a, a clamping uh, unit, um, a, a separator. You can use it as a winch. You can use it as a come along, as they say. Um, jaws of life. A lot of emergency vehicles carry these uh, um, just in case they're their power units don't work. This, this is the old faithful. Um, if you're a four-wheel drive uh, enthusiast, you just don't want to go in the back 40 without these. Um, you can rely it to work 99.999% of the time. It's going to be there for you. Um, and the attachments that you can get for this, the things you can make if you go on different sites to kind of see, okay, you know, what can I put with my high lift? There's little... Um, wedges that you can make for log splitting. There's specialty hooks. There's all kinds of things and mounts that you can get for this. Hands down, this would be my top pick. If this was under my tree, I'd be happier than a clam. How much How much does that thing weigh, Mike? It's about 48, 50 pounds. So yeah, it's got some weight to it, but uh, it's definitely worth its weight in gold. That's for sure. If you're out in the back 40 and you need something to get you out right now. Well, the way you're holding it, you're making it look like it's like 10 pounds. So that's, that's <laughs> nice. Uh, what's the, what's the reach of the high lift jack? What's the max height? Um, so it's rated at 48, um, you know, around that 46 inch mark um, is about, you know, the max you'd want to go just because of center of gravity and, you know, dangerous situations, but definitely they do also make a 60 inch unit. Um, but uh, we only carry that 48 inch uh, currently in our, in our lineup. Um it, the way it's built, this thing should last for years and years as long as you do a little bit of maintenance on it. Nice. You spray sea foam on that? <laughs> no, that's one thing you don't want. Uh, you know, some some lubrication on the the climbing mechanisms and and that, and you're good to go. That wasn't my question. Someone asked that, so just <laughs> clarify. Um, Derek, 
What is your number one holiday product this year? All right. Well, my number one pick this year is the Schumacher two amp battery charger and maintainer. So we get a lot of people coming in looking to see about uh, what can I use to charge my battery? I want to take it out for the season. I've got a camper, I've got a, a boat, a lawn tractor. So something like this, you can plug into the wall, hook onto the battery and basically walk away from it. Um, it will charge the battery to its full potential, six volt and 12 volt. And after that, it goes into a float mode. So what it's going to do is it's going to sense the voltage. It says, I don't want to charge it anymore. I'm going to sit and wait, and it's going to watch. It's going to monitor the voltage. And when the voltage starts to decline, it's going to uh, start the charge process again. And when you go to get back uh, you know, out into the uh, boat or start the lawn tractor again in the spring, it's going to uh, be top charged and ready to go. So the nice thing about this guy here is if your battery has been sitting for any length of time and it has any sulfites built up inside it, which is the byproduct of uh, a battery sitting without a charge, it will actually work to reduce those sulfites and break them down and rejuvenate the battery. Um, you have some alligator clip attachments that it will come with. Standard alligator clips to clip onto the top or side post battery. And there's a quick connect on it as well. So you will pop that off just like that, male and female. And you can attach the two other adapters that it comes with. And one of those would be ring terminals. So you can leave that permanently mounted on a, a vehicle. You could have it on a lawnmower. You could have it on a, uh, a motorcycle, an ATV, a quad, snowmobile, something like that. And that'll just keep the battery charged up. And the last adapter, which is kind of neat, would plug into uh, just a standard 12 volt outlet that you're gonna have in your vehicle. So if you need to uh, do a, just a quick uh, roadside charge or something like that, or if you've left the lights on, you could leave that on there. It'll charge back up. Now, it'll take a little while to charge up something that's pretty flat that's not going to start a vehicle, but you'll get, uh, you'll get uh, the, the proper charge level out of it uh, if you've got the time to leave it sit. And you can't hook it up incorrectly. If it does get hooked up with the positive and negative switch, what's going to happen is uh, it's just going to go into a, a flat mode. It's not going to give you any voltage until you fix that. And it's going to show it on the, uh, on the screen on the front of the unit. Awesome. Well, we got a couple of questions coming in while you're walking through the features of that, that cool product. So Dean says, handy. He says, I can hook my riding lawnmower battery up to this and just leave it all winter long. Absolutely. So what I've done, you know, in the summertime, I leave mine in the unit, obviously, and I have the ring terminals hooked up these guys here. And I have this quick connect just kind of tucked in under the hood. And when I'm stopped uh, running for the day, I'll just plug the charger in and leave it in the shed. And when I come back to it, I unplug it and it's ready to go. So in the winter time, I've got them down in the basement and I just take the charger downstairs, have everything set up on a small little table. And uh, I have my RV battery, my lawn tractor battery, my generator battery, everything's set and ready to go. And I can change the batteries uh, as uh, I need to with the charger. You can hook up multiple chargers and have them charging at the same time. It's a really nice option. The amount of batteries you just ran through there goes back to my previous point of batteries are just are, are too much there. We have too many batteries going on, but it's good that we can keep them maintained with this product. Jerry wants to know, is the battery charger waterproof? It is not waterproof. There is some ventilation on it. Uh, let's see if I can find that for you. There's to to that, while you, while you look at that, Leanne yeah. says, how drop proof is the case? Will it shatter if I drop it two feet? Uh, not that I've ever done so, she says. <laughs> so maybe she did. Who knows? It, it might. If it's really cold out and it's been sitting out in the cold, the case could probably crack. But uh, to the waterproof aspect of it, it's not waterproof. There's some water resistant quality to it. So if you're going to leave it outside and you're not sure about the weather, if you can get it under a hood, that's ideal. Um, but if you can shelter it, because it does have some circuitry inside it, obviously in voltage. So, uh, water and power don't like to mix too much. And, uh, you know, you could kind of do yourself a disservice there. All right. One more question here. Uh, Daryl, do you also sell extra connectors to use more than one battery for the battery charger? We do not, but we do sell in the uh, trader truck and trader department. We do sell a terminal set that looks like this. So basically what it is, is two ends on a consistent loop and you would trim that and then you'd make the quick connect up. So you could put some ring terminals on it if you had uh, three or four different applications or as many applications as you need to. And you could certainly build them. Very easy to do. We do that all the time. We take people over to that center of the store and get them set up with that. Amber just asked that, how many can you charge at a time? So you could build a, a huge charging 
unit? Well, you'd charge one of these at a time. For this specific unit, we'll only charge one battery, but you could have it hooked up if you had uh, some you know, few different machines, you could hook it up uh, to that machine. Once it's charged, you could switch it over to the other one and you could just move it back and forth as you need to. Okay, and uh, Amber, one more time, she's asking, does the temperature affect the charge at all? Um, I mean, it, it would. Ideally, what I'd suggest, if it's going to be really cold, um, Winnipeg, we get some pretty cold temperature. Um, I'd want to see all the batteries uh, in at least a, a slightly insulated space. It wouldn't have to be something that would be standard room temperature, but I wouldn't want to suggest leaving it out in minus 25, minus 30 weather. Um, get it into somewhere, even if it's just a flat, you know, five degrees or minus five, even in a shed or an outbuilding, and then leave it charged on that. It'll stay topped up. Okay. One last one, David and Hamilton, because the battery questions now are just flying in. Everyone has battery <laughs> questions. Everyone's got batteries. Uh, David and Hamilton wants to know, would this work on 12-volt 8AH batteries like the ones we use for ice fishing electronics? Yep, absolutely. A 12-volt charge, um, it'll top it up. Uh, those small batteries, it'll, it'll actually top it up quite quickly, and it'll keep it maintained. So once the battery is charged to its full potential, it'll shut down and monitor. So if there's any load on the battery or the battery starts to drop, it'll... Uh, reset the charge and have it charging again. Excellent. Okay. Well, those are those are your top five each products. Thank you very much for for going through those with everybody. Lots of questions. Lots of great questions coming through. Um, hope you guys have added some to your list now uh, of things maybe you want or you thought about someone else who wants one of these items that we went through today. Now, what didn't happen is no one asked me. No one said, "Hey, Dan, can you put together a list?" Uh, so thank you uh, to everyone who didn't ask me that. But I have done a list, and it's just got one item, one item only. And that item, Princess Auto gift card. That is all you need. You can purchase any of the items we showed today. Uh, anyone in your life would love a Princess Auto gift card. I can assure you that. And actually, since we, we are giving away two of them right now, two $250 gift cards, we are giving away today's winners. Congratulations. First of all, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. But today's winners, Brian Wilkins and Leanne Jeffrey. Congratulations. You've each won a $250 gift card for Princess Auto. Uh, we'll be in touch and get those to you shortly. Um, one more time uh, from everyone here at Sea at Work. Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. Something different than I'm used to. So yeah, definitely. we can do this again. Well, I hope you can come back on next year. We didn't scare you away, so that's good. And Derek, thank you as always. No problem. It's always a pleasure working with you, Dan. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Derek. It's a pleasure working with you too. What a, you know what, what a fun, what a fun way to end this holiday edition. Uh, so thank you to everyone for tuning in today. Uh, enjoy the holiday season and we will see you next year on See at Work. <laughs>